Kenny, we'll start with the uh, incomings and outgoings. How pleased were you to get Jordi Hawula tied up for the remainder of the season? Yeah, really pleased. He's made a good impression since he's been with us this season. He's pushing for a start. I do think that there's a very good finisher in there and, and he has pace as well, which does give us you know quite a compliment along our front line. And yeah, he's, push, he's pushing our forwards hard and a good player to come off the bench. Uh, and I'm pleased he's committed his his future to us for the rest of the season because the way the game's going to come thick and fast as well, we'll need him. We'll need, we need options from the bench. We'll, we'll need depth if we get uh, uh, injuries or, or COVID cases. And, and, you know, he has good experience in this division as well. Yeah, Matt Sharpness would have probably counted against him when he first joined before that Sunderland game. But now he's been here a little while. How does he dislodge those ahead of him in the squad? He's built up well, you know, very well. And, and you know, while he's... he's um, not had that much consistent training. He's he's, he's trained hard with us. Um, his fitness levels are, are good, and and I, I think a big thing as well is the other players rate him and trust him, and and he's got the confidence of the other players as well in the group, and and you know as and when we need him, and we will definitely need him. I think he'll be he'll he'll be fit, good to go, and, and uh, know the team and and what it needs. Campring has returned to Bristol City, but won't be available for Sunday's game. What did you make of Cam's time at the club? Yeah, I really liked. Cam and, you know, dovetailed with Lee in the first half of the season. Obviously, you know, slightly different players. I think that uh, Cam really does bring a lot going forward, has great pace and energy, particularly in carrying the ball. And we're sorry to see him go, but we also, we understand because he is a, a Bristol City player. They've They've had injuries in the first half of the season. It wasn't something that they were expecting to happen, but, you know, they have to react and look after their club. But a really good young player, I think, got a good future, a big future. Hopefully, we've we've helped him along the way with that. He certainly helped us in the first half of the season, and uh, he will be a loss definitely. Um, and um, yeah, although he won't be able to, you know, play this weekend against us, which we're pleased we're pleased with, I'm sure that you know he'll go on to get some game time for Bristol City in the second half of the season. Rico Hackett Fairchild has also gone on out on loan. Uh, he's gone to Southend. Would you say that's a good step up for him, considering his uh, spell at Bromley earlier in the season? Yeah, he, he was unlucky through COVID because obviously then his, his career sort of came to a halt slightly, which is you know not not his fault. But he's built up well anyway, going back to to Bromley on loan, and and he feels and we feel as well that his next stage is getting into the football league now and going f- uh, uh, from. And the national league into League Two is a is a step in the right direction. It's you know it's one step further towards getting into Portsmouth Portsmouth's first team and bridging that gap. So he's fully fit now, and um, I'm sure will help Southend to to have a successful second half of the season. It's a good club for him to go to, very good club, and I think he'll do very well. And and as he he, he works hard to secure a place at Portsmouth. Are any other movements on the horizon at all? Kenny, obviously, Campering going back to Bristol opens up a little bit of a, um, a spot to cover at left back. It does, yeah, and we will want a, a specialist left back as well. We are we are looking for another one, a left footer, uh, and that that would be ideal, as you say, in terms of a replacement. At the moment, we have one space with, with nobody else going out, and um, we have one more space available for which we we will use in the next few weeks. We, we think, and um, you know, we'll look hard and, and make sure it's somebody that we feel can contribute and, and take us forward. It wasn't COVID, uh, but the weather that kept you from playing last weekend, it looked like the right decision in the end, but nonetheless, how frustrating was it to have that game postponed? Yeah, it was, it was really frustrating when we were sort of all clear and no problems in terms of COVID and, and, and training hard, but it couldn't be helped. And you're looking at the other games in that area and, and sort of Northern Manchester and fl- Flyde, et cetera, et cetera, the Fly Coast that had, that had been called off. So they did have, uh, uh, obviously, problems. And, and there is no point in playing on a pitch that, that is unplayable. So just one of those things is we'll have to go there now, pro- probably on a, on a, a, a Tuesday night. But, but that's OK. You know, we've, we've got to come for all ty- different types of tests if we want to be successful. It was frustrating for us. But the games have come now thick and fast, starting with this weekend at Bristol City. We're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to getting playing again. Uh, all, all of the players are fit and and, and well and, and ready, which is good news. How have the players reacted in training to not having a game for three weeks? Like we say, it's, it's frustrating for them because they build all week to a game and then there isn't one at the end of it. Yeah, they've trained very well. Um, the, 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 the Saturday um, of the Accrington game, we actually trained and 
got to say, we all did feel quite flat really on that particular day. Um, but we put the work in, but we, you know, that was quite a flat day really in terms of, you know, all hoping and expecting to play, but you know, we have to keep fit. We have to keep ticking over. There is no point having a break and, and the players attitude has been really good. They've, They've uh, trained hard, applied themselves well and, and done it to a good standard. And I do think that will be reflected in the games that are coming up. We've also had um, you know, uh, uh, an all clear in terms of our testing. We, we, we tested last Monday, which was the 4th of January. And that has come back with well, all, all players and members of staff clear as well, which is, which is good news for this weekend and for the future now going forward. Yeah, that's excellent news, Kenny. We spoke last week about a circuit breaker, which now obviously doesn't look like it's it's going to be happened uh, it's going to happen sorry because the EFL have confirmed that clubs are now going to have twice uh, weekly uh, mandatory testing what's your take on that is that a step in the right direction yeah the PFA have, have, have stepped in and you know s- s- safety of the players making sure that you know we can all be organized around symptoms because people pick up you know different illnesses as well at this time it's not all about covid but you do need to know you do need to specify you know when when it is and and also then the spread of it right the way through your your squad and your club so it makes it organized for everybody you know we understand and, and know that it's a natural progression for the let, let's say 15 16 uh, weeks left of the natural season and and also as well you know, hopefully we can separate other illnesses from COVID so that, you know, there'll be a time when, you know, people can push through and we know we can do that with some safety. And and that is part of uh, playing in, you know, particularly the second half of the season through the winter in England as well. Absolutely. On to the football. Let's talk about the, the good stuff. Uh, third round of the cup is always an exciting weekend. Uh, the so-called big boys now in the competition and you'll be looking to upset a team from a higher division for the third season in a row. And they're, they're an excellent side, Bristol City. They've had a good start to the season. We're looking forward to the game. Um, looking forward to playing. You know, we're, we're pleased that we've got sort of two cup games to to get us going, Bristol City, and then quickly followed by Peterborough in the EFL Trophy. So, you know, Sunday and Tuesday for our squad, where everybody will play, that'll be, you know, that'll be very good. And and it is a big game. You know, 1.30 live on TV on, on, on Sunday is a, is, a, is a big game and a great game, one we're looking forward to. Um, and uh, not underestimating the size of the task. Obviously, Bristol City have some some very very good players, and you know they're, they're a tough nut to crack at their at their place as well. So we'll we'll be looking to you know do our best, see if we can uh, hit the ground running. We don't want any sort of time lag in terms of finding our form, finding our feet, getting our match sharpness. We'll need to be right on it. But you know, the players are looking forward to the challenge, and, and it's, it's it's a big challenge as well. Do you say the pressure's on Bristol City going into this game, or do you not see it like that? No, I don't see it like that. I think there's pressure in every game. We 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 want to try to get through if we can, and, and we understand that obviously the championship and a, and a well-established championship club as well that have been competing at the the top end of that league in recent seasons, and rightly so, they're a big club. But you know, pre- pre- we put pressure on ourselves to be successful. You know, we don't want to uh, um, uh, start off slowly in terms of you know our second half of the season now, and we want to start off well with a good performance and hopefully a performance that can give us every opportunity to win. Yeah, like you say, they started off pretty sharp this season in the league, but it's been a bit of a tough run of form lately. What sort of style are you expecting from them? A real mixed bag of results recently. Yeah, they have, but you know, they've had, as, as we know through Cameron Pring, some, some injury problems and some, some changes themselves to the team. But you know, whoever they play, and they have, a, they have a couple back for this weekend, but whoever they play, they'll put out a, a, a very good side. And we'll have their own reasons as well for wanting to get going and, and progress in this competition. You know, they won't want to, won't want to lose any, any more than, than we will. So you know, we know it's a, it's, a, it's a good test for us and you know, we understand that we'll be putting ourselves up against a very good club and a good set of players as well. And we're looking forward to that challenge. Yeah, finally, Kenley, you've always said that winning breeds winning regardless of the competition you're in. In this year of years, does a cup run take a bit of a backseat with the expected league fixture pileup, or, or do it you not see that? when the games come. I mean, at, at this time where we haven't played for a little while, and also, you know, we don't play a league game until next Saturday. Uh, the Bristol City game and then the Peterborough game, they're good games for us. As we run into, obviously, you know, then Fleetwood, uh, Wimbledon, Hull, Lincoln, Charlton is a big run of games. But I, I think it's good to have these cup games. And no, no I don't I don't generally see it as a distraction at all. Uh, you have to play the cup games uh, when you do. There are times, obviously, where some, you know, s- s- some uh, uh, travelling can make a big difference. 
but you know we 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 haven't had that as a, as a, as a problem so far, and and it's certainly not a problem this weekend. You know, for us to have two cup games as we run into the league schedule, I think is a good thing for us. And and you know we want to hit the ground running and make sure that by the time we do come into the the league games, you know we're we're back into the groove of, of playing on a regular basis and uh, playing to our maximum and our potential in terms of making sure that the, the, the side is cohesive and, and can get into its rhythm very quickly.